This is Ken with VOD TV, and we're with uh, Gary Evans from HBC and Milda Headbaum from, uh, I guess, HBC as well. Um, HBC has been out there uh, in the beginnings of uh, the 1996 uh, CELEC uh, Competitive Act, uh, the Telecom Act, and uh, now you're going to be talking about uh, networks and what ails networks and how to fix them. So, Gary, why don't you tell us a little bit about this? <laughs> Actually, um, this is sort of an accidental happening uh, in many ways, Ken. Um, a number of years ago, we were asked to take a look at a system in the Northeast that was in trouble and uh, the first assignment was to come out and take a look at the system analyze it and tell people what we thought could be done and that suddenly spawned um, and a number of additional similar assignments milda however has been in the network doctor business far longer than we have uh, Milda is a very well-known consultant in Minnesota and has been working in the upper Midwest for many years um, counseling uh, systems that needed visits from the doctor, so <laughs> to speak. So Milda, what sort of uh, issues are you seeing out there with networks? Well, they vary so much as we will talk about on Thursday. Um, there are obvious um, stresses that go with any startup and that's what's been going on in the last half dozen to dozen years um, and then uh, past those startup stresses which can range from um, simply fi financing to political support and community interest and community commitment all of those things need need to be done in ways that may lead to success and things can happen along the way that 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 make that success difficult to reach. So there's that. Then there's the next part of the um, story uh, is operational problems that happen after you've been in business for a period of time. And uh, Gary was just referencing a particularly significant intervention um, in this Northeast case that he was referring to, and that was an on already established ongoing network. So um, you can get sick at various points. <laughs> Well, HBC, I think, uh, is an example of uh, network done right, and um, and so what differentiates it from uh, from other networks? What have you guys done right? Well, I I think there are a number of things can that contribute. Now, one of the things we have to understand is that we didn't have the stresses of finance mm -hmm. when we started our network, and that's huge. I mean, our founders said, we need to do this for our community for a variety of reasons and made the resources we needed available, not in generous supply, but in adequate supply. And, you know, many of the things we find, um, and I think Milda would probably concur with this, is that people get very excited about building networks and sometimes emotionalism gets ahead of realism and and so sometimes the planning is flawed because people so badly want things to happen that they skip a few steps that they maybe should have taken so it really sounds like uh, your help could actually be uh, very very uh, pivotal in the planning stages of a new network well, I think that's one of the places that um, you need to try to get it as right as possible. Yeah. Uh, and that sometimes means going beyond the general practitioner enthusiasm, mm -hmm. <laughs> if you want to put it that way. And um, we very much recommend that when the time comes, you should turn to the to the experts who, who do know, say, for example, a lot about finance doing the finance right uh, or to work very closely with those who will bring big commitment from the communities for certain kind particularly for startup networks that community commitment piece is critical and um, so I think there can be help with that uh, yeah and as you you pointed out you had uh, backers that uh, were very committed to your community first and foremost so finding those people how do you do it well uh, in our case, they they sort of just arose <laughs> and uh, and tabbed a couple of us to uh, do a feasibility study that started it all. 
I think another thing that, that helped us, Ken, and it, you know the term expert is one that causes me to shudder, <laughs> but, but the fact of the matter is that uh, perhaps one of the best things we bring to a project is all of the mistakes we made sure. and the things that you don't want to do over again. Very simple things. If I were getting into a competitive build today, my channel lineup as an example would be exactly the same as my competitions. Because for some people, having to learn a new channel lineup is a deterrent to subscribership. So there are all sorts of little things that contribute to success. And uh, having, um, you know, walked the walk for, um, gee, going on 20 years now, um, we have certainly learned the hard way in many cases, which we think can help someone else avoid some of the hard way, if you will. You know, it's interesting, the channel lineup, that was an interesting observation, and it just uh, it triggered the thought, is, is broadband enough now? I mean, you know, 10 years ago, it was, you know, triple play, triple play, or even three or four years ago. Can you do it with broadband only, given that there's so much over the top, or do you still need video? Well, um, you do need video for certain reasons. I mean, you've got committed viewers, uh, and they want those programs, at least a certain portion of them yet. You're living in at least two different worlds at the same time, that new over-the-top and the generation that's responding to great variety and choices um, that they know how to, to get to and want to get to. But then you have part of a viewing and subscriber base who isn't, very active in that mm -hmm. way and you need to be careful to satisfy both would you agree Gary I, I you know in our case clearly video still drives our subscriber numbers actually though as we talk about broadband today uh, broadband means to me a variety of different things that are far from the traditional now I mean the voice video and and data products it seems to me our bread and butter now, but if I were building a network today, it would be based on the quality of life differentiators I could make happen with that network. Healthcare applications, education applications, security applications, you know, a variety of new applications that it seems to me have the potential to make networks so much more um, successful because the revenue streams are multiplying at a very rapid rate now. And they may even come from other people, I suppose. That's right. And I think what Gary has just described, if you want to look at it from a phrase maker's point of view, it really is broadband for whole life. Mm. It's everything. It's everything that we do is now enveloped by and conditioned by, connected to um, digitality, to digital life. Mm -hmm. and, and Gary's just give a wonderful description of how that works from a service provider's point of view, how you have to try to think about that, which is not so simple because there isn't a roadmap for it, yeah. at least not yet. Well, that's uh, good. I'm sure we'll hear some of that roadmap in your panel and uh, broadband of the whole life. That m makes a lot of sense. Thank you both. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you yeah, again. Likewise. Talking with us. Thanks. <laughs>